下面我们进行第三个议题：音乐教育问题与交流。Let's welcome Gada Ganem, soprano and voice and music outreach program coordinator at the Lebanese National Conservatory of Music. Uh, I am uh, Gada Ganem uh, from Lebanese National Conservatory, uh, and uh, we are so happy to be part of this uh, panel uh, discussion about music uh, in Lebanon. So uh, I will start my presentation about the Lebanese National Conservatory. Uh, I teach music, uh, voice, uh, opera, and uh, sing. And uh, I am a part of a program, a new program in Conservatoire called Music Outreach. Uh, we will talk about it uh, during the presentation. And I put here the conservatory website and the Facebook uh, uh, address and the Instagram. Uh, we will talk about the history, a little bit about the conservatoire, and I will show you some videos uh, from the archives regarding the Arabic orchestra, the students' orchestra, uh, some videos of the graduates, uh, and we will talk about the music outreach program. Uh, we'll show you what happened in, in the hospital visit. Uh, we will, I will show you a video a little bit about the Lebanese Philharmonic Orchestra and the Jazz Big Band. The history of Conservatoire started with the composer Wadia Sabra, born in 1876 and died in 1952. Uh, in 1910, uh, founded the first music school in Lebanon. It was called Dar al Musika in Beirut. In 1925, it became so popular that this public school, it became a public school, this private little school. And in 1929, it was transformed into a national conservatoire. And the founder, Mr. Sabra, became the director until his death. Mr. Sabra left behind a quarter-toned keyboard and the Lebanese national anthem, and few operas sung in Arabic language, among other compositions. The first national conservatoire was accompanied by a monthly magazine linking the institution and the students with a new music lover class, because there was no Facebook and there was no social media back then. Uh, after Mr. Sabra, uh, Mr. Anis Flehan, he was a Lebanese American pianist and composer, became uh, in 1953 the um, head of the, compo uh, of the conservatoire. He succeeded in working at administrative level and on founding a string ensemble leading the way to the chamber orchestra of the conservatoire. Public concerts became more and more popular during that period in, uh, from 1953 to 1960. Uh, Mr. Nicola Dahl, uh, born in 1891, and I don't know the date of his death, he became um, also the head of the conservatoire after Mr. Flehan passed away. Uh, he worked on reorganizing the academic programs inspired by the Western methods. After Mr. Dahl, Mr. Tufik Sukkar, a young Lebanese composer uh, who studied in France and with Sabra, became the next director in 1965. Mr. Sukkar highlighted and promoted the chamber music work for strings and woodwinds in the purpose of preparing a solid base for the future symphony orchestra. Mr. Sukkar was known for his encouragement and promotion of Lebanese composers of Western and Arabic expression. During that period, both conservatory orchestras helped Beirut in becoming a privileged stopover for many foreign artists and musicologists interested in Arabic music. From 1969 to 1986, Father Joseph Khoury, born 1921, Excellent composer and a graduate of César Franck School in Paris, became the new director. He made some reforms in engaging the authorities to promote music in public schools and ensured funds to pay foreign visitors 
artists and teachers. He also helped the, or the orchestra, sorry. He also helped the orchestra to get out of Beirut, the capital, and to spread in rural areas of the country, playing modern, classical, and Arabic music. They counted 100, 160 to 180 performances per season. In 1972, Father Khoury established Music Summer School, opened for public schools teachers, students, and amateur, as well as for all foreigners visiting Lebanon and wishing to study Arabic music. Father Khoury was known to be a Maronite sacred music reformer and a researcher on music education and its problems. Dr. Antoine Hbeya was nominated then director of the conservatory from 1986 until 1991. He was not a musician and he was a lawyer. He was famous in managing uh, public uh, institutions. During the Lebanese war in 1975 until 1991, the National Conservatory suffered great material damage. All the instruments, documents, and library were looted and burned. The conservatory resumed teaching in 1991 and was upgraded in 1995 to a national institution of higher education. The president of the conservatory from 1991 until 2011 was the composer Dr. Walid Ghilmiye. Under Ghulmiye's mandate, the conservatory became under the supervision of the Ministry of Culture, because we were before under the Ministry of Education. Now, under the Ministry of Culture, the LPO Philharmonic Orchestra saw the light and so did the Arabic Music Orchestra. Also, conservatory expanded outside Beirut for the first time to more than 10 branches and many academic publications were done. After the passing of Dr. Ghulmiye in June 2011, Mr. Hanna Al-Amir was appointed as acting president. And in May 2014, Dr. Walid Musallim was appointed as interim president until 2018. And it's under his mandate that the People's Republic of China committed to build a new building for the conservatory with two concert halls. That will be conservatory, just like a university of music, where students will graduate with a music baccalaureate. The actual 16 branches now will be only music schools preparing students in six to eight years to enter the new higher conservatory. In October 2018, Mr. Bassam Saba, a musical virtuoso, acclaimed multi-instrumentalist, educator, and world-renowned authority on Arabic music, was appointed as general director and president of the Lebanese National Higher Conservatory of Music. Saba studied Nai, Oud, and violin at the Lebanon National Conservatory, then continued on to receive his BA in Western classical music and flute performance at the Conservatoire Municipal des Gobelins in Paris and Masters of Fine Arts in Flute Performance and Music Education from the Gnesen Musical Pedagogical Pedagogic Institute in Moscow. Regarded by the world as a true pioneer of the Nai and Arabic interpretation of Western flute, Saba was pursued by many of the greatest Arab Western classical and Western pop icons. He has collaborated with classical and pop stars such as Yo-Yo Ma, Sting, Adisha Keys, Santana, and jazz icons such as Herbie Hancock and Quincy Jones. Saba's former ensembles, projects, and soloists features include Simon Shaheen's Alcantara and Near Eastern Music Ensemble, Yo-Yo Ma's Silk Road Project Ensemble, Danny Daniel Schneider's Nai Concerto and the Bassam Saba Ensemble. Saba has been invited to perform as a soloist by numerous renowned philharmonics throughout Germany, Switzerland, Middle East, and the United States. One second. I have. Known throughout the world as one of Arabic music's finest conductors, Bassam Saba has led the New York Arabic Orchestra nonprofit organization for the education of Arabic music in America to prestigious venues such as Carnegie Hall, Lincoln Center, and Detroit Symphony Orchestra. 
about the Conservatoire. Lebanese National Conservatory's president and board of directors are nom nominated by the government. Lebanese National Conservatory is divided into two departments, Western and Arabic music. Students are admitted from age seven and above upon entrance exam. Each instrument has a specific age limit. Since the La Lebanese National Conservatory is an entity of the Ministry of Culture, tuition is free. Lebanese National Conservatory has around 6,000 students registered each year in all 16 branches in the country. We even have one branch in Rumye prison to help prisoners play music, and it has been there since 2000. It has, uh, Conservatoire has 297 teachers and 23 regular administrative staff. We have three orchestras are affiliated to the Conservatoire administration. LPO, Lebanese Philharmonic Orchestra, the Arabic Music Orchestra, and the Jazz Big Band. Each department has also a student's orchestra directed by devoted teachers. 2020 was our first online music education experience. We were not ready as in other countries. Families usually don't have enough computers at home for all their kids to share schools, attendance, and music lessons. We managed to attend all students' needs and we were very flexible in scheduling and rescheduling lessons. Students and teachers were motivated during confinement to post their lesson and practicing on our official Facebook page, Lebanese National Conservatory, and Instagram, Lebanese National Conservatory. Also, teachers performed online on their own and worked with their students on music ensemble, both classical and oriental. From the archives, uh, here, this is a small um, video, just a little, just for you to have an idea. One second. This is Students Orchestra. Uh, choir, students, and uh, musicians. Uh, I'm not going to uh, listen to the whole thing, I'm going to have an idea. Okay, so we won't lose our uh, presentation time. Okay, here. Yeah? One second. Okay, here. This is Mr. Saba um, with the Arabic Music Orchestra conducting a rehearsal. And this is me taking the video trying to be very artistic. started this uh, new vision also in Conservatoire, working in the community, for the community. So this part, uh, we see here the visit of uh, Mr. Saba and students and teachers to the hospital um, and uh, cancer hospital. So we did uh, an event in the lobby and with a very talented uh, little kid, now you will listen to him. His name is Edward, Diane, and Mr. Saba. So I want you to listen to just a little bit of Mr. Saba and a little bit of... Thank you. 
Okay, so um, uh, here is um, the LPO Brass Choir with Maestro Jordi Mora. If you want to listen just a little bit of this also. Okay, also in, um, uh, after uh, the confinement and when uh, everybody was at home, uh, we did, the um, orchestra did a big concert and it was called the Sound of Resilience in the Baalbek temple. So I included here the YouTube um, connection link, but it's a one hour thing. Uh, and it's a beautiful uh, concert. Um, here, after August 4, I just wanted to share this because uh, it is part of our life in Lebanon. Uh, conservatoire, um, uh, three of the branches of conservatoire in Beirut were damaged. So I, I said, maybe it's good for you to see what uh, we are going through right now. So some um, the windows are like blown, uh, glasses are blown, uh, the ceilings are also out, uh, instruments are okay, nothing happened to the instruments. But let me see here. This is part of also another uh, different uh, rooms and different buildings. Thank you for your introduction, Gada. We have some questions for you. In what way do students majoring in arts management in music conservatories go on to serve the society when they graduate? The Lebanese National Conservatoire holds an important place in Lebanon culture and heritage history. It is the institution that is accessible to all ages and socioeconomic classes and is one of the most respected musical institutions in Lebanon. It is a governmental institution. It is our only public school for music in the country, opened for all students for free. Uh, we have free concerts for all. Lebanese Conservatoire offers free weekly concerts mainly in Beirut, but also in rural areas. Teachers perform solo or in small ensembles, mainly in Pierre Abouter Theater in University of St. Joseph, every Tuesday night for free. Also every month, students give performances in conservatoire for their colleagues, parents, and the community. Lebanese Conservatoire has three big orchestras, that we talked about, and they perform annually more than 70 concerts with the above mentioned ensemble performances. Not all orchestra members are at the same time teachers. Lebanese Philharmonic have 90 members. Some of them are Lebanese and some of them are foreigners. It has been performing weekly concerts every Friday since the year 2000. Thursday, Arabic traditional and contemporary music in USG, University of St. Joseph. Also, the jazz big band is also a jazz orchestra at the concert, performing at least two concerts per year. Uh, you see, in Lebanon, everything you have to pay to see music or theater or concerts. So we are offering for um, the audience, for visitors, for tourists, uh, throughout the year, free classical and jazz and world music concerts. So this is part of um, spreading the culture in Lebanon without having anyone pay uh, a penny. So uh, a new vision 
I will talk about the new vision of the new director. Uh, the new director has been appointed for two years now in Conservatoire, and a lot of things uh, have been happening to Lebanon since then. Uh, it's like really uh, very um, strange and surreal what is happening to the world and to us here in our little country. Uh, we had this vision to have a music outreach and communication department. This is new in the Conservatoire. This program is at the essence of our new vision and involvement of the Conservatoire in the community. It also reflects our belief that being an artist slash educator is more than appearing in concert or in a classroom. Both teachers and advanced students are involved in the community program in which music and the love for music step out of the conservatory to touch a bigger crowd spread across Lebanon. Being the pioneers of the music education and performing scene in the country, we as the Lebanese National Music Conservatory strongly believe that part of our responsibility and duty is reaching out to the community where schools, municipalities, cultural centers, hospitals, nursing homes, among others, using those facilities as a platform to introduce the mentioned outreach cultural program. The program is designed to bring the benefits of the art of music to create a scene of awareness, appreciation, and learning about our culture, while focusing on both world and Arabic traditional music. In this program, artists perform, talk informally about their music and share their enthusiasm on a personal level in an interactive way. It is created to fill the void on two levels. First, the lack of bringing the community together through art, music, and second, the chance to create jobs for all our graduate and talented students. Artists will perform in hospitals, care centers, public schools, municipalities, museums, galleries, in the streets of deprived areas, concert series in refugee camps, in an interactive way, and others. Both community and artists are enriched by this relationship. We saw in the, in the presentation how we did this event in the hospital. With the spread of the pandemic worldwide and the political socio-economic instability in the country, now this program is put on hold and has done little steps forward. Can you tell us about the teaching and practicing methods that teachers and students use at Lebanese National Higher Conservatory of Music? Instrument and voice are taught on one-on-one -on -one basic. All other theory, history, languages, music development, and other group sessions courses are now done online. Each student, student has one or more sessions per week with his or her instrument teacher, depending on the level of the student. Each teacher is encouraged to prepare a concert for her, his students once a year, or ask their students to be part of an all students concert performing at least once in front of an audience. These performances take place in the conservatoire. All instrument students are requested to be part of a choir, different than the choir made by singers. These choirs perform at least two concerts per year. With the spread of COVID-19 in 2020, students studied online with their teams. This academic year, we are thinking of keeping all group sessions online and all other instruments classes that are taken individually between teacher and student to, to be kept live in the classroom. The Red Cross will help us this year to make an awareness campaign to take all the necessary precautions to stay healthy. So uh, we're, we're more thinking about being safe, you know, uh, and healthy and uh, this year, because this year is not like any other year. Do you think it would be possible to have some sort of student exchange program between the Lebanese National Higher Conservatory of Music and the Sichuan Conservatory of Music in the near future? Well, the answer should be, and it is, of course, we, uh, we can and we should exchange a student program. Uh, 
uh, but during the pandemic, we should encourage all online exchange programs for students. We are open for all suggestions and ideas, especially that traveling is not advised yet. So uh, I prepared a few ideas. If you don't mind, we can, I can share them with you. Um, students from both sides, from the Lebanese National Conservatoire and the Sichuan Conservatory of Music, can attend online music class with a specific teacher. Uh, second, teachers attending music educational masterclass and conferences to tune their teaching skills. So it's not only we should do exchange of student program, we can do exchange also for teachers. Uh, third, online music ensemble performing from both sides between students and also between teachers. Uh, also another idea, a fundraising concert for a good humanitarian cause uh, will be also uh, good for this crucial financial crisis in Lebanon. Or getting maybe instruments for students. A proposed joint concert with our orchestra and Chinese musicians all online. Another idea, we would have loved to invite Chinese musicians to give master classes in Beirut and introduce Chinese traditional instruments once the pandemic crisis is over and well handled. Then work with Chinese embassy in Lebanon to get all traditional Chinese instruments, have them exposed in the National Museum and granting the Lebanese National Conservatoire the permission to use them in performances. Thank you so much, Gada. 下面我们欢迎四川音乐学院管理系副主任陈继文老师。嗯，大家好，我是四川音乐学院艺术学院理论与管理学院的Teacher陈。呃，接下来呢，我想呢，把我们学校呃向大家做一个简单的介绍。
中东欧国家青年艺术人才培训和实践中心，哎、呃，还有我们的西南音乐研究中心，还有我们的四川音乐文学学会。啊，以及我们四川省数字媒体艺术协会等等吧，啊，那么实际上哈，就是从这些也可以看得到啊，我们也是哈，就说是，呃，那么呃，努力的以优良的一个学风和高水平的这么一个教育质量，啊，为国家去培养一些优秀的专业人才。当然呢，历史上哈，大家知道的、熟悉的啊，我们也是呃，历历历史上很多的一些名家，比方说，啊，大家知道了这个。作曲家常书民，呃，何逊田、贾大群、高伟杰，还有我们画家张大千、张善子、李有行、吴作人、丁冲、马一平，啊，那么还有戏剧家熊福熙、陈白晨、吴音，啊，还有我们的声乐教育家，呃、啊，郎先生、郎玉秀，嗯、啊，还有当然呢，现在这几年哈、啊，大家熟知的这个呃，钢琴教育家旦昭义，啊，他培养出来的这些世界钢琴王子李云迪。呃，等等啊，呃，都是我们这个就说是学校的一些优秀的呃专业人才。那么近几年呢，实际上像这个呃我们的一些就是流行音乐方面啊、呃，像我们的青年歌手张麦呀、李宇春呐、啊、何洁呀、谭维维呀啊，那么魏晨啊、秦、呃、海波、王铮亮等等啊，都是我们学校的一些的杰出代表。所以我们近几年啊，尤其是近五年来啊。我们实际上师生呢是获得了很多的呃重要的一些奖项，啊、呃，包括在国家这个科技奖、呃科研发明奖，还有这个省级科技奖等等啊，是几十项的奖项。那么实际上哈、啊，这样子也是哈、啊、为我国的这种呃文化大发展、大繁荣，也是做出了我们啊学校应该做的一些贡献。嗯、呃，那么从这个国际交流上来说啊，我们学校呢，实际上哈、啊、这几年呢，啊是从应该是从二零零三年，啊二零零三年开始就已经正式招收了一些留学生，啊，那么还有港澳台的学生，啊，这里面啊我们就是有美国的，有法国的，有新加坡的，韩国的，啊马来西亚的。啊，缅甸的留学生和香港啊、台湾地区的啊学生等等，都是呃、啊、到我们学校学习。呃，那么呃、啊、还有很多的啊，就是、说是欧美地区的呃、啊、学学生或者是学者啊，不断的来我们学校进行一些这个交流研修活动。那么我们学校哈、啊，实际上哈、啊，就是呃、啊、目前呢哈、啊，就是这是我们的这个机构设置上来说，呃、啊、也是比较全面的啊，比较全面的。而且呢，哈，就说是，呃，我们目前哈，就是，呃，学校还是以音乐和舞蹈学科，呃，为主体的，呃，艺术学理论，呃，还有我们的戏剧影视学、美术学、设计学，那么这些啊，也是，就说是以协调发展，所以说我们的学科建设是在不断的完善。这几年呢，学校也在啊，就说是不断调整。啊，不断进行一个学科布局的一个呃、啊、持续优化，那么这里面哈、啊，我们也是哈、啊，就说是呃坚持一个开放办学的这么一个方针，啊，积极的去拓展对外交流的一些合作，那么我们也非常重视啊这个国际的一些呃学术和人文交流，呃，那么这样子哈、啊，就是实际上也是啊，就是嗯。呃大力的，就是呃，开展一些就是国际合作和校地合作的这么一个，呃，尤其是我们现在哈，就是嗯、呃，这个在这个脱贫攻坚上，嗯、呃，我们也是助力了一些地方经济，嗯，比方说社会和文化的为社会和文化教育发展，呃，与多个城市啊、知名企业呀，啊、呃，签署了一些战略合作协议，嗯、呃，那么这里面哈。呃，我们可能以后跟这个，呃，摩登天空、影响城市之声，那么后续呢，可能都会有一些战略合作啊。嗯、呃，我们也是，就说是，呃，在创立一个就是中国专业音乐学院原创音乐发展联盟，啊、呃，来推动我们中国原创音乐的发展。嗯、呃，所以说哈，我们这个也是积极响应的成渝双域，就是成渝两经济圈啊、呃、这么一个建设。
，呃，所以说学校呢也是成立了一个成都地区的双语经济圈高校艺术联盟，呃，目前是有大概六十八所高校参与，呃，那么这样实际上为成都双城的一个文化艺术，呃，社会经济，那么实际上哈也是就是做出了一定的贡献。呃，我们的像我们的城市音乐厅啊，我们这里提一下，呃，我们城市音乐厅呢，实际上这个啊也是，呃，就是成都市政府，呃，那么就是专门哈、啊，呃，成这个建呃建了这么一个城市音乐厅，也是为了繁荣，呃，成都的地区的一个文化活动，啊，推动文化发展。那么这个城市音乐厅呢，目前呢，我们学校哈、啊、也是哈、啊，就说是。呃，今年就是已经正式投入使用了，而且呢，成为了学校和地方文化艺术融合发展的一个重要平台。嗯、呃，那么它也是为学校的艺术实践提供了一个高水平的这么一个展演场地。啊、呃，那么这样子哈，也是推动了成都市它去打造这个音乐之都和西部文创中心的一个目的。呃，我们你看啊，今年疫情，实际上我们城市乐厅也进行了很多的演出，尤其是线上的，啊、呃，也在这个尝试。那么我们也开展了很多的这个线上的一些音乐交流活动，呃、所以说啊，那么相信啊，通过我们的这个学校，呃，这些不断的努力，嗯、呃，我们经过这个八十多年的办学发展和我们几代川音人的这个共同努力，嗯、呃。那么我们相信啊，长风破浪会有时，直挂云帆济沧海。呃，在新的历史时期，呃，我们始终不忘初心，牢记使命。那么，相信我们在这个人才振兴、内涵发展、改革创新、追赶、跨越、开放合作这五大战略，啊、呃，以及我们的这个呃八大工程引领下，我们一定会把川音建设成一个优势突出。特色鲜明、国内一流、国际知名的这么一个社会主义的高等艺术院校。感谢陈继文老师的介绍。我们有几个问题：四川音乐学院的学生是否有兴趣学习或了解阿拉伯音乐？四川音乐学院是否有兴趣在两个学校之间开启线上合作、线上进行老师交流以及学生交流？您这边是怎么看待这样形式的交流呢？嗯，其实我们哈、啊、就说是很希望啊，就是我们的学生和呃，黎巴嫩呃学生呢，通过这个线上来交流的，我们也很欢迎，呃、也很也很欢迎这种方式。那么，呃，因为哈，就是呃，学生也是希望去了解一下阿拉伯的这个他的一个音乐，呃，因为黎巴嫩的呃，这个据我了解啊，他的这个国家高等音乐学院，他是以这个西方音乐和阿拉伯音乐为主的啊、呃，就是分成这两大部分。那么，呃，我们呢，学生呢，恰好哈，对这两块呢，尤其是这个阿拉伯音乐，呃，可能了解的不是很多。那么，如果呃有这么一个机会，我想呢，哈，就说是，呃，我们这个学校的学生呢，那么通过线上哈去了解阿拉伯的音乐，呃，了解西方的音乐。那么，黎巴嫩的学生呢，那么他也可以了解我们东方的音乐，了解我们中国的音乐。呃，那么其实哈，就说是双方呢，呃，学校的师生呢，通过这样的一个方式啊，我想呢哈，实际上哈，呃，可能会能够呃更好的去了解两个国家的一些文化啊、呃，以及呃，我们就是两个国家的学校，那么它的一些就是在我们的呃对音乐人才的培养，以及我们的呃艺术教育呃等等，以及在我们的音乐传播。呃，这方面他的一些方式方法，呃，能够探讨一些国际的合作，呃，或者说我们一起哈，就是通过这个呃一个交流的模式，那么能够就是说是共同的促进我们世界音乐和文化的发展，呃，所以说我们是对这个模式哈、啊、还是呃非常欢迎的。感谢两位嘉宾参与我们的第三个议题：音乐教育问题与交流。感谢所有嘉宾以及线上的所有观众朋友们参与《影响城市之声》亚非地区现代音乐产业论坛。希望这次论坛活动能对全球，特别是亚非地区的音乐产业从业者们有所启发。那我们下次活动再见。